Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God, our Father, and our Lord, Jesus Christ. You made those promises, right? You sat there and you told your child, this weekend we will go to where you want to go. We'll go to that store that you've been wanting to go to. We'll go to that fair that you've been wanting to go to. And then all of a sudden, something happens. And you can't make it. And you want to be forgiven. Because you know, after doing that, on a few weekends, your son or daughter will look at you and say, no, you're not going to do it. You're making a promise that you won't keep. And so you have to ask your son or daughter for forgiveness. Or perhaps it was a child that made you a promise and you see that they're not going to keep the promise. Wow. Wow. I mean, there is a condition that we have when a promise is made, right? We are to keep that promise, at least some of the time. And when we don't, we have to ask for forgiveness. As we sit there and realize that we've, again, missed the mark, that we didn't do something that we were supposed to do. And it brings us to a sad moment in our life. And so we look and we say, Lord, forgive me. Whether we're asking our own child or we ask the Lord and we pray. But we continue to pray. We continue to ask for guidance. We continue to ask for strength in order to make it through the next time so that we don't disappoint neither our children or our parents or our God. Here in this church, you have been a church that for over 60 years has been heard and forgiven. If we were to live during the time that this temple was being dedicated by Solomon and hearing this wonderful prayer of Solomon, if we were one of the people that were sitting in that temple, perhaps not so close because we have to be good temple goers and sit in the back, or maybe up close enough so that we could hear Solomon's words. So let us be one of those guys. This is my version of the story, but let us enter in as one of those people at that time. Then Solomon was standing before the altar of our Lord, and there he was in front of all of us. And he raised up his hands and he said, Oh Lord, there's no one like you in heaven or in earth. No one who keeps his promises called covenants. No one who keeps their love for people. For those who walk in your way who walk faithfully before you like David, my father. You spoke and promised to my father David with your mouth and with your hands you kept those promises. You promised that there would always be a descendant of David on the throne as long as Always a condition with God sometimes. Always. There's a condition there. And he says, as long as you walk faithfully with me and remain faithful, 
And he says, now let that promise you made be confirmed here this day. Luke talks about this later on. Luke says that there was a Pharisee who... I'm getting ahead of myself. Let me back up. Let me finish the story. So here I am at the temple watching Solomon do all of this and he says, But will you dwell on earth, Lord? Because the heavens can't even contain you. Would this mere little temple contain you? Would this church named Redeemer contain you? He says, ever get that feeling that, you know, when I thought of this, to try and contain God, even in heaven, is like taking a 10-gallon bucket full of water and having a 5-gallon bucket and having your boss say, now fill that water into that, into that 5-gallon bucket and I want any water left in that 10-gallon bucket. You know what's going to happen, right? No, you can't go get another bucket. You can't contain God. So how could this place and even any place on earth? He says, but listen to my prayer today. He says, let your eyes watch over us all and every day, all 24 hours and every day. This place, this place that you said you will put your name there. By the way, Is his name here? Here in 2014 in this place? When somebody asks you, where do you go to receive the forgiveness of God? Or where do you worship God? Or where do you go to church? Your answer is what? Redeemer. That's God's name. Isn't that what we call Jesus? So his name is dwelling here. Solomon finishes up his prayer by saying, Listen to me and grant me and your people that when you hear, when they turn to you and they pray and you hear their name and hear and listen where you are in your heavenly dwelling, hear us and forgive us. Hear us and forgive us. Solomon said that you listen to us. In the prayer of in Luke chapter 18 there is this Pharisee and there's this tax collector and the Pharisee comes in and he says you all know the story but he says, okay, you know what, Lord? I thank you that I'm not like that guy over there. And I not only thank you that I'm not like him, but I thank you that I, that I give all that I have and I can give you more and I have no need for anything from you. And then on the other hand, you have this tax collector who is so filled with guilt and crying out to God, and he says in, in, his, in his temple, he says, Lord, I am not worthy to be here. I'm not worthy to be with you. Now, he doesn't say it in those words, I know. But here we have a person who's come to be heard and to be forgiven. You know, I remember talking with people as a minister and they'll tell me, you know, they'll say, you know what, I, whenever I think about all the troubles I'm having in life, I thank God that, you know, I think about other people who are having worse trouble and I, I thank God that it's not me, which doesn't sound right to me. Really? Your life is, your life is okay because somebody else is suffering more than you and that's really why you should believe in God? I think, though, that that's not all that they're saying. I think that they're really saying is, is that I, you know, I should be thinking about other people. And I should be also praying about their hurts and saying, Lord, help them. 
Hear. Hear me, Lord, and forgive those people. Hear me and forgive others. Well, that's all good, isn't it? Amazing. So I looked and I thought about this and I said, 60 years. 60 years that there have been people here being heard in their prayers and being forgiven. And none of you turn to the temple, which would be southeast to Jerusalem, which isn't there. Or none, maybe, perhaps, I don't even think none of you, when you're in your homes, turn to where the, the church is from your homes, whether north or south or east or west or any other direction from there, and say, oh Lord, hear me and forgive and look to this place. But you look to one, the one who dwells here, but actually, listen to this. As he read in our gospel lesson, Jesus comes up to Zacchaeus and he says, I want to stay at your place. I want to come and have dinner with you. And, and Zacchaeus says, okay. And, he says, and, and then Jesus says later, today salvation has come to this house because this man too is a son of Abraham. After he confesses his sin and atones for it. So this, this prayer and this hearing also comes with something. Because that's one of the questions that I said. What does this mean then? That we're heard and forgiven. It's really wonderful and you all know it. And what else can you do with it? I heard part of your Bible study and you talking about the fruits and the people saying, you know, here's this, here's this rotten apple, eat it. Or, or here's this nice, really like, nice good stuff and you don't really need Jesus, you don't really need to believe. But that's what you all do, you all believe, you all believe that when you are going to prayer that you're going to be heard because God has told you that he does. And not only that he does, and that he forgives. And you know that only because you see him raised from the dead. And if he's raised from the dead, then you know the other thing is true, that he died on the cross. And that's what we've been telling you and what's been told to you by pastors for 60 years here is true, that we are forgiven. And God has heard and forgiven his people. And so when you get out there in the world with a person who doesn't know that, how can you help them? Friday morning, I'm in a restaurant. This last Friday. And this big man sits down across from me. He's in his mid-60s. He's still working. He could retire because he's old enough to retire at his age. But he can't because he has some bills to pay. And so he looks at me and he starts to talk to me about his life. He's not the sharpest tack. As a matter of fact, he's got what, what people now call ADDHD. But when he had it in school, guess what? They never did anything about it because they didn't know that that was what the name was it for. But he sits there and he tells me how he's been treated all of his life. He tells me about the fact that he can't learn. He tells me about the fact that he knows he's a big man and that he should weigh about 100 pounds less. And he feels guilt. And he says, for once I'd like to know that I'm doing okay. He knows his sin. And he's begging me to talk to him about forgiveness. And I said, I'll pray for you. And it brought tears to his eyes. And then I told him that he was forgiven. I told him that all the things that he's done in life, that although he couldn't be, you couldn't tell him something today and he'd remember it tomorrow. If you're a teacher, you understand these ADD, HD kids a little bit. And so he looks at me and he says, I can be forgiven? Of course. Because God heard his prayer. He's been driving a truck since he was 19 years old. He's been providing for people. And I said, you've lived a faithful life. Pray and her to be forgiven. And although he was in tears because he needed to be forgiven, he also had heard it. 
And we can take that to people just like that. My experience can be yours. And I bet some of you already do it. Because it is that simple. It's not that hard to figure out. But for 60 years, you've been doing this. I printed this off of your website because I'm not here anymore, so I don't remember all of the history. Excuse me. It says here that on January 10th, 1954, you started doing your meetings to become a church. This is your history. That you bought this site in March of 1953, which all of a sudden I said, so they, they decided to buy the site and then make the church later. Is that what I'm reading? Okay. Because you, you wanted a place closer by. And then after several meetings on September 26, 1954, I wasn't even around yet. <laughs> My family wasn't even in this area yet. My, my, my parents lived in Fort Wayne at the time. And the oldest, my sister, was two years old. And the second oldest, my brother, was one. And the third oldest was just a month, a little over a month and a week old. Barely. And you began what became an important thing in a Pleasant View Dairy Hall. And it was where you came to pray. Because if you notice at the beginning of the service, Pastor Kleinschmidt said, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. And he does that because it's a beginning of a prayer, a prayer that you're giving to God and a prayer of God that you are asking God for forgiveness, which you will receive here. In His sacrament of His body and blood, as He's heard your pleas, as we will pray soon enough for the petitions of this church to pray for the people who are in need so that He can hear and forgive because He's constantly watching you for 60 years. As a pastor, this makes me smile because I see pews filled. Okay, a few empty ones, but not much. And it makes me smile because, I, you know, churches around by us they're not getting this kind of attendance. You talked a little bit about that in your Bible study. I only caught bits and pieces, so I'm going to stop with that point there. But You've been heard and forgiven. And so then you called your first pastor, David Koenig. Reverend David Koenig. In 1954. And he served you for several, several years. And he prayed and he and he prayed and you prayed and you were heard and you were forgiven. Some of you have been here for almost the whole time. If not all of you. Uh, if, all of you in spirit because this is your church. This is where you are at. And then in 1963 it was Reverend Raymond Lozanski. And he served until 1978 when Reverend Ralph Dipple came. And then, because he was a blessing to me, he's my favorite here. <laughs> Reverend Art Berkman, who has served the longest here. And he prayed, and like the other pastors, and now you have Reverend Eric Kleinschmidt, who also prays, and you pray, and you pray, and you're heard, and you're forgiven. God hears and He forgives. That's what He does. That's what Solomon prayed for. And that was what the temple is all about. But you are the temple. As Paul tells you in his, in his word, in his epistle, he says, your bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit, so God dwells in you. So you don't have to look to Redeemer necessarily, but you don't look to yourself. You look to your God to be heard and to be forgiven. But that isn't all the people that pray for you. Correct me if I'm wrong. It's 20 vicars you had? 20. And you've had how many? Four. It's 24 vicars. This church has been a blessing to this community 
by praying and hearing. And you pray for all of these vicars. I know you do. And you're heard and they're forgiven and you are heard and you're forgiven. This is what it's all about. Today you celebrate 60 years. And what a wonderful gift. It's a celebration and it's a time. What I ask you to remember is to, be, to pray. And remember God is watching, He's hearing, and He forgives. And whenever you get a chance, for anybody who will listen to you because some won't, tell them you will pray. And tell them that if they'd like to pray with you, you will pray with them and, they, and you will be heard and you will be forgiven and you can tell them that too. You believers have that gift. God grant that you use it. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.